This will be an unboxing of the Intel Core i5 3570K. Uh, this is the Ivy Bridge replacement for the very popular Core i5 2500K. Uh, I've installed that CPU in a lot of systems for friends. Uh, and this is its Ivy Bridge replacement. It's unlocked and unleashed, hence the K designation, so you can overclock this thing without any uh, BIOS based limitation. We've got four cores, four way multitask processing, Intel Turbo Boost technology, uh, Intel Smart Cache technology, integrated memory control, supports two DDR3 uh, channels of memory, and a three year warranty with Intel HD Graphics 4000. 77 watt TDP, it's at 3.4 gigahertz. So let's open this up. So you might be wondering, if you don't know, what is the difference between the uh, 2500K and the 3570K, and what benefits is Ivy Bridge in general? Well, Ivy Bridge uh, performs, uh, there's a case badge here, clock per clock better, but in games you're probably not going to see any performance improvement whatsoever. But what uh, Ivy Bridge does do um, is does limit your fa your ability to be able to overclock because what Intel has done with their new Ivy Bridge line is the thermal interface material that goes under this heat spreader, which then comes in contact with the die uh, of the CPU. That uh, thermal transfer, thermal interface material, used to be on previous generations of CPUs dating back for years, including the 2500K. That thermal com that thermal compad, that thermal interface material, was a flux of solder. But with the Ivybridge CPUs, they've replaced it with a regular type of thermal compound, which is significantly cheaper, but does result in the Ivybridge 3570 CPUs uh, and the new Ivybridge CPUs, even though they do have a smaller CPU die, we, we've gone down from 32 nanometer to 22 nanometer. And when we went down from 45 nanometer to 32 nanometer uh, with Nahalem, uh, we saw a significant temperature drop and we also saw a performance increase. But this time around, because Intel have put in cheap thermal compounds inside of the CPU, the Ivybridge CPUs are about 15 to 20 degrees hotter than their last generation Sandy Bridge CPUs, like the 2500K. So if you are buying an i5-3570K or any new Ivy Bridge CPU, you need to get an aftermarket CPU cooler because they're simply going to get very hot, particularly once you start overclocking. Now, I still find it laughable that Intel make this CPU significantly hotter, 15 to 20 degrees, even though it should be, because the die is a lot smaller, a lot more efficient thermally, they still include this crappy Pentium 4 style heat sink with small fan and pre-applied thermal compound. If you're buying any Ivy Bridge CPU, I don't care if it's Core i3, I don't care if it's Quad Core, I don't care if it's 3570K or 3770, I don't, I don't care. You need to throw this away and buy an aftermarket CPU cooler. You can buy good aftermarket CPU coolers for 15 to 20 dollars. If you're using the stock cooler, perhaps you need to reevaluate uh, your life a little and maybe see a neurologist. But let's get to the uh, the actual spec of the CPU. This CPU, if you put a good cooler on it, will perform well. Um, it's 3.4 gigahertz. It will overclock quite well. Uh, mind you, if you had a 2500K, you could probably uh, overclock it past the threshold that uh, this is better performing. Uh, thanks for watching the unboxing of the Core i5 3570K from Intel. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this in the future.